Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more and going more in depth with the whole Captain Marvel news, character, and also box office situation. So of course, if you watched my videos the last couple of days, I covered the fact that we have seen a huge drop in the projections, which makes headlines like this even more funny and just so freaking hysterical so basically if you don't remember the original projection for this weekend was between 140 to 180 million dollars for the opening weekend march 8th and now since then it has dropped to a mere 100 million dollars with a range of 80 to 120 million which is a gigantic drop when you all think about it now people are going to try and spin it saying well that first number wasn't really accurate because obviously you know it's it's more than a month out it was earlier in the year and so therefore for it was just based off of those first 24 hours and a lot of things have changed since then but 100 million dollars is still great and captain marvel is tracking for an insanely strong opening weekend box office hmm yes incredibly strong insanely strong and those are the words you're going to constantly hear from this point going forward they have already everyone in the media has already made their position and made their thoughts about this movie well known it doesn't matter if the movie is good or not they are going to give a positive spin to it no matter what happens that is just the nature of the media today that is the nature of film criticism today and it's really really sad because now you know you can't go to the film critics and say oh is this going to be a good movie is this a movie that i should go see no longer can you do that because you honestly cannot trust them because if they have a movie, if they have a character, if there is an actor that they are themselves attached to politically, they will go out of their way to try and spin their reviews in either a positive or a negative life that's someone that they don't agree with to try and push the movie forward. They know based on what's happened in the past, that if it has good reviews, positive vibes, positive thoughts, that overall it will usually do much better than if it were the opposite. Now, what we've seen, interestingly enough, in the last year is how much this has changed. Remember that when Venom came out, Venom got really, really bad reviews. The critics absolutely hated Venom. And yet, even though they were saying, don't go see it, it's a waste of time. Oh, it's just a, you know, another white man in a role, blah, blah, blah. Even though they were going all in that direction, people went out to see it, loved it, shared the word of mouth, and it was effective. So gone are the days when the word of mouth from critics had really any impact on the box office whatsoever. Nowadays, it's all about the audiences. It's all about what they want to see. It's all about what they say and their own thoughts about the movie going ahead. That is the reason why I am skeptical because I already know how the critics are going to be speaking about this film even before it comes out. Just look at the fact that they tore apart Alita Battle Angel. Why do you think it is that they tore that film apart? Is it because they thought the film was not going to do successful? Is it because it didn't live up to their own expectations about what the character thought, you know, what they thought the character should be? I think that a lot of those things came into it. But I really do think that one of the main reasons why is because they did not want to give a huge support and a huge um, boost to a movie that comes out just a little less than a month before Captain Marvel. They've already put all of their, <laughs> you know, they've already put everything, everything in the kitchen sink. All of their reputations on the line for Captain Marvel being a great movie, and they're not going to be able to split that between another strong female-centered film. Not to mention the fact that Alita Battle Angel and the actress that plays Alita and also everything else around it is not woke. Everything from Alita Battle Angel is just good from a storytelling perspective. There is no narrative. There is no agenda that's being pushed forward, which is why it's a damn good time at the movies. And it shows you very clearly that as long as you are able to provide an entertaining time at the films and keep your identity politics to the side or even just non-existent at all, people will show up. People will support it, and people will show love to that film. So it's interesting, though, that they're trying to say, oh, $100 million is going to be a huge opening. Again, just the opening title and opening uh, paragraphs really show that. It says, Captain Marvel looks to be another monster hit. A monster hit for the Marvel Cinematic Universe when it lands in theaters on March 8th. According to early tracking numbers, the first female-led superhero, how many times have you heard that before, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe will open to well over $100 million domestically. And that's the reason why I'm still talking about this movie. That is the reason why I'm still making videos. That's the reason why I'm continuing to point it out because every single major article keeps on pointing it out. It's a huge part of their marketing campaign. It's a huge part of what Brie Larson is trying to push in her marketing campaign as well. And so therefore, it makes it very clear that that is the direction that they want to go. And when you add to the fact that the person who is leading this film doesn't care about white men, does not care about people that she does not think will like her film and, you know, because of their race or their gender, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. Like, because of that, that is what's keeping this number down. This is the reason why it was tracking at 160 to 180 and is now down to 80 to 120. 
This is a film that very well could come in well under $100 million, especially if Brie Larson continues to act in the way that she does. It very well could be too late at this point for it to be salvaged. Now, of course, I could also be reading too much into it. I, I've always said this from the very beginning. Once we get those opening weekend numbers, especially in the foreign market, because I think the foreign market is going to tell us a lot more about how successful the film is going to be overall. I think that the film overall will range between three to four hundred million just here in the United States max there's no way it's gonna get anything more than that but the foreign market very well could be very not much for this film because of the fact that it is indeed being driven in a political way because there is a political narrative and the foreign audiences overall don't really like that they don't like being preached to it's already hard enough to have a mill a film from the west going into that it's another for that film to have an agenda to it trying to preach not only to western audiences but to audiences across the world as well people don't like that people don't want to be preached to and it's just as true if not even more true when you go to the overseas market. So the Hollywood Reporter, it says here, State Studios tracking the metrics for the movie are calling it giant and reportedly said there is an unaided awareness and definite interest. And here's the problem. How can that be true if originally speaking it was 160 to $180 million and now it's $100 million? On top of that, when it was that $160 million projection, at the uh, domestic gross was supposed to be around $435 million. So if you take into account the 160 and keep into account that that's like a 30 to 40% drop to the $100 million, if you take the same kind of drop at the $465 million, you're getting into that 300 sub $300 million range for the domestic market. Seeing that this is not going to be a huge, gigantic hit overseas, there's just really no indication that it will be at this point. That tells us everything that we need to know about what the overall gross of this film is going to be because if it only comes in at three to four hundred million dollars in the foreign market, you're looking at around a four fifty to six fifty million dollar movie, which is again my projections and my own thoughts on this. And I'm still working on the math to try and show you very clearly why I get to that number and why I don't think it's going to get make anything more than that six fifty number. As it continues, this would be uh, this would make it the biggest box office debut since Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom to hit theaters last June with its opening weekend netting one hundred and forty eight million. There's also a chance Captain Marvel could beat at Wonder Woman's opening weekend from 2017. The first female-led movie from in the DC Extended Universe opened to $103 million domestically. Well, the reason why the film did that well, and also keep this in mind, that Wonder Woman should have probably done better. Had people known about that, had the DCEU been in a better place, Wonder Woman would have opened to a much higher number and would have made well over a billion dollars. But because the DCEU was in such a bad state, because the films previously just were not well received from audiences or critics alike, the film was able to get a very, very, very slow start, but because it had good word of mouth and because people realized, oh, this is actually a really good movie, and oh, Gal Gadot's an awesome person, oh, let's keep on watching and keep on supporting this film. So it was interesting to see the movement that it had from that place. But the real question is, why is it that they are continuing to push for Captain Marvel? Why is it that they are making up these headlines? An insane strong opening weekend. When you compare this to other opening weekends, it's right in the middle of the pack. I mean, if, if this film opens at $100 million, that's going to be, you know, what, top six out of 20 films. So, you know, not the greatest, but, you know, it would be okay. If it makes less than that, you're looking at it being in the top 10. So it looks like in all likelihood it's going to be a middle-of-the-pack movie, and yet they keep on telling you that it's going to break box office records, that it's going to be this huge thing. Oh, and it's because it's, a, it's the first female-led MCU film. They keep on leading with that. Even the marketing itself, oh, she's a Haro. Let's show the boys how it's done. All of this has been in the marketing. Brie Larson has made it very clear how she feels about this film, having this film be a part of her activism, in her own words. But who is indeed Captain Marvel? I mean, I've talked about it a lot, and I've said, oh, you know, her character's been rebooted four times, etc. But who is actually the person of Captain Marvel? And what's interesting is, even, in, even though this analysis is pretty much straightforward, I would say, is actually very good as far as t telling you what the characters were originally and where they went. Obviously, there's some stuff in between that I'm going to point out. But it's interesting that even with all of that, the title is still, Who is Captain Marvel? A Complete History of the Avengers All-Powerful Superwoman. Okay, well, that is definitely an oversimplification of who Captain Marvel really is, but I digress. So let's actually go through this article together because I think it really is important for us to get all of these things very straightened out. So it's going to give that introduction to everything like that, but let's actually dive into the history of this character. So if you don't care about the history of this character, you already know about the history of this character, hey, thanks for watching today. But I think it's important that everyone knows, especially the trolls out there trying to say, oh, you know what we're talking about. Okay, well, let's let's look into the history then. So it says, who's the movie version of Captain Marvel? Because also, too, as I show with the headline, this is 
definitely not a source biased towards my own thoughts. So Larson is playing Carol Danvers, a Marvel Comics character first introduced in non-powered, purely human form in Marvel Superheroes number 13 in 1968. So Carol Danvers as a character, Carol Danvers as a character, has been around since 1968 and did not have any powers. A U.S. Air Force officer and security liaison, Danvers popped up as a supporting player in several late 60s comic book stories. Then she suffered a freaky accident, as so many Marvel characters do, which fused her genetic structure with an alien warrior from the Kree race. From the Kree race. The superpower Danvers debuted in 1977. So again, the original character debuted in 1968. It was only 10 years later. It took her 10 years to actually become a person with powers. So she became a very, she was a supporting character Character, not very important, became superpowered in 1977. Again, context is key. And spent a few years as a member of the Avengers before a capricious godlike alien named Marcus brainwashed her and spirited her away to an alternate dimension. Almost as soon as she returned, she had her powers and memories stolen by a troubled unit, mut- mutant known as Rogue, which is a storyline that I know a lot of people want to see happen in the movie because they want to see Brie Larson taken out of the equation. However, if they stay with the same Rogue in um, uh, the person that they cast for the X-Men series, I will not be happy because she's not much better than Brie Larson is. In the decades that followed, Carol dealt with mental and emotional problems stemming from those two traumas. She also got new powers and operated under the names Binary and Warbird. In recent years, the comic book Danvers has reverted to something more like her original superhero form as Captain Marvel, an ace pilot and galaxy-hopping champion of the downtrodden, again, in recent years. The Captain Marvel movie reportedly goes back to the early days of the character. Though it updates the action in the 90s rather than the 60s and 70s, the big screen Carol Dammers will have the military background and the Kree connection, and will also be suffering from amnesia when the story begins, similar to what the comic version endured in the 80s. The film will also draw from one of the classic 1970s storylines when Earth got caught in the middle of an ancient war between the between the Kree and the shape-shifting alien race of the Skrulls. So that gives us a little bit of the context about what the movie is going to be about. It is indeed going to be set during her origin story. However, as we see here, it's the origin story of Miss Marvel, not as Captain Marvel. And I think that that is still a difference that needs to be pointed out because they are very different people. The people who wrote the 1970s Miss Marvel stories of her having powers is not the same group of people writing the Captain Marvel comic of today, which is what it's going to be more closely related to, at least as it comes to her character. name alone should point that out. Is Carol Danvers the first Captain Marvel? No, that honor actually goes to Kree warrior known as Marvell, introduced in 1967. So 1967, Captain Marvel was played by Marvell. Originally tasked with infiltrating Earth's culture for nefarious purposes, Marvell quickly developed warm feelings towards the human race, including his new friend Carol Danvers, and became a hero, often helping his adopted planet fend off hostile aliens. This Captain Marvel character plays a key role in several of the publisher's more epic 70s storylines, including the Kree Skrull, the, the Kree Skrull War. As written and drawn by the iconoclastic comic book director Jim Starlin, some of Captain Marvel's stories will become central to the superhero, superhero comics genre's evolution towards ambitious and adult fantasy. In fact, in 1982, Starlin was responsible for the first Marvic, Marvel graphic novel, The Death of Captain Marvel, which combines cosmic adventure with more down-to-earth uh, story of a hero dying of cancer. With, with Marvel appear in this movie, no one in Star Marvel Studios will say, which means the answer is probably yes, and again, Jude Law has pretty much been confirmed at this point to be playing the so-called Marvel. Something tells me, though, that they will make him into a villain of some sorts. I don't know why I have that speculation. I just do, and I have a feeling it's going to be because it's going to be her versus a white man, and of course, why would they not want to have that kind of a story. So therefore, who is Miss Marvel? Carol Danvers' first superhero identity, in the comics anyway, was at Miss Marvel in 1977. So again, her character, Carol Danvers, is introduced in 1968, did not have powers. She gets powers, and in 1977, she is known as Miss Marvel. And here is where we start to see where her character is based and why we are all concerned. Why it is that we're hearing the words of Brie Larson, we're hearing the words of how she is looking up to the person who wrote the current Captain Marvel, and why that has us all very worried that this film is going to be filled to the brim with identity politics. Because as it says here, because in 1977, the other Captain Marvel was still alive. That's why she was called Miss Marvel. Despite her skimpy costume, so skimpy costume is bad, the original Miss Marvel was proudly was proudly feminist, as fierce and capable as any man, with a name meant to evoke Gloria Steinem's Miss Magazine. So the name of her character alone 
alone was already supposed to be cognizant of the feminist agenda. Now, of course, back in the 70s, it was very different than it is in 2019. However, I think it is still worth noting nonetheless because that will be very key to her character moving forward in the story. That's why it was so controversial when Dan Danvers was abducted by Marcus and briefly written out of the Avengers circa 1980. And they don't say it here, but basically she got abducted and was apparently raped and then returned with amnesia. And then they decided to write it out all together, say that it was a dream or it was an alternate storyline, alternate reality whatsoever. So, of course, that got a lot of backlash at the time. And I can see why they would do that. But also at the same time, I, I don't know. Recent writers have returned Carol Danvers and Miss Marvel to their women's rights roots with when Kelly sued to comic. Here is where we get into the modern day iterations, because keep this in mind. Since that time, this is something the week the week does not talk about is that the character had to be rebooted and had to be canceled constantly. However, he does touch upon that a little bit in a second. So recent writers have returned Carol Danvers and Miss Marvel to their women's rights roots. When Kelly Sue DeConnick started writing Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel in 2012, which is the first time that Carol Danvers was as Captain Marvel. She put more focus on her military background and take no guff attitude. Writer G. Willow Wilson, working with artists Adrian Alfana and editors Santa Aminat and Stephen Wacker, garnered glowing headlines in the mainstream press in 2013 when they created a new Miss Marvel, a Pakistani American teenager named Kamala Khan, the first Muslim to be the lead in a comic book by Marvel. Isn't that interesting? 2012, 2013. We're starting to see a pattern and a trend here. How many Captain Marvels have there been? Here we go. So, so many. From 1967 to 1977, the only Captain Marvel in the Marvel comics was Marvel, and then Carol Danvers became Miss Marvel. But in 1981, Miss Marvel was robbed of her powers, and in 92, the original Captain Marvel died. Since then, nearly a dozen ongoing comic book characters have adopted the title of Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel. Why do you think that is? Is it possible because the comic never got picked up? Is it possible because no one was reading the comic and that forced them to have to reboot, re restart every single time with new people, with new stories to try and get people interested? Isn't that interesting? For much of the 1980s, Captain Marvel was a New Orleans-based black woman named Monica Rambeau, who by many is the only Captain Marvel, since she is technically the first female Captain Marvel. Interesting that she did not get her own story here. Then Marvel's children took on their own turns of zipping through the stars. And also in the 80s, between the Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan era, a wrestler named Sharon Ventura fought crime as Miss Marvel. And then there are alternate universes and short-lived variant versions. Short-lived being a very key term there. Regardless of who's wearing the costumes, though, there are two recurring themes attached to Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel th names. A tendency towards big interplanetary sagas and an emphasis on strong women. Interestingly enough. All right, who is the one that says Sazam? All right, this goes into the history about how um, DC Comics actually originally owned the character as Captain Marvel, who said Shazam. There were some, you know, there were some legal battles and things of that nature. And, and it, yeah, just a whole other thing between DC and Marvel to basically leading to the point where DC decided to take the character that was originally in Marvel and call him Shazam. And then Captain Marvel was continued to go on in various ways. And here again, this is key. One reason why Marvel keeps publishing Captain Marvel comics even when the character wanes in popularity is to keep the name alive in the market to block the competition. To block the competition. So basically what we've gotten to this point and this is pretty much where I'm going to end up stopping the video and the stopping the history because I think that this tells us all that you need to know. So now you know the origins of the character, you know where she came from, what she's based in, the identity politics that she's based in, and also therefore what the modern day Captain Marvel movie is going to be focusing on. But this I think is key. The, 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 the comic book character that is now being made into a film is not popular, is a character that has been rebooted countless times all the way back from the 1960s on. The reason why is because the character has never gained true popularity. Most people would say that actually Monica Rambeau might have been one of the more successful versions and iterations of Captain Marvel, but even then, her character did not last very long, especially when they decided to make her into Carol Danvers and put Monica Rambeau essentially as a background character and have different other names, etc. I'll say Monica Rambeau sounds like a pretty badass character, and I would love to see a movie with her. However, knowing the current state of, you know, the current state of Disney and the current state of Marvel, uh, they might try and make her a little bit too woke. The important thing here, though, is to note that it is indeed the case that Captain Marvel is only being kept alive, that they are only rebooting the story because they do not have an audience and they have to. At this point, they have to reboot the character's name in order for it not only to stay relevant, but also to block competition. 
That is truly amazing to me because what that tells me is that this movie is going to be based off of an extremely unpopular character from the 1960s on, even more so now, ever since that she became woke, ever since she became woke in 2012, and that that is the main purpose for her existence. And yet this character, this inconsistent, this totally (laughs) unpopular character from the comics is supposed to, in the eyes of Marvel, the MCU, of Disney, be the future for the MCU. Isn't that interesting? Guys, what are y'all's thoughts about this? What are y'all's thoughts about the history of this character? I think that it tells me a lot about what the character is going to be on screen. It tells me a lot about why Brie Larson has felt so compelled to speak the way that she has. And also tells me a pretty decent amount as to why I do not have any excitement for this film and why so many others are also lacking any passion for this film either. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. If you like this video, smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. You're all amazing and beautiful people. And yeah, again... The character in popularity was waning constantly to the point where they had to reboot it. There were countless numbers of people playing the character of Captain Marvel because of that fact. And the one that we have now has been rebooted at least four times because not because they they, they're doing something smart, not because they're trying to set up something cool, but because they're trying to simply block competition. Thank you for watching and God bless.